Have you ever wondered what it means to be truly rich? When you think about being rich, what's the first thing that comes to mind? For many, the immediate image that springs up is that of a lavish lifestyle, bursting with luxury cars, sprawling mansions, and an endless flow of money. You see, our society has conditioned us to believe that wealth and richness are solely about monetary value. But is that truly the case? Well, let's take a step back and think about the broader concept of wealth. The term wealth stems from the old English word wheel, which means well-being or welfare. It's interesting to note, isn't it? The very root of the word hints that wealth isn't just about material possessions or money, so what else could being rich entail? Well, it's subjective and varies greatly depending on personal perspective. For some, richness might be the ability to travel around the world, experiencing different cultures and cuisines. For others, it could be the freedom to spend quality time with loved ones, without the constant pressure of work or financial stress. And for yet others, being rich could mean having a fulfilling career that brings joy and satisfaction, even if it doesn't necessarily bring in a six-figure income. Consider this. A person may have all the money in the world, but if they're constantly stressed, unfulfilled or unhappy, would you consider them truly rich? On the flip side, someone might not have a lot of money, but they have a loving family, good health and plenty of time to pursue their passions. Could we not consider them rich in their own right? It's food for thought, isn't it? Perhaps we need to redefine our understanding of wealth. It's not just about the material aspects, but also about the intangible elements that enrich our lives, like love, happiness, health and fulfillment. So, being rich might not just be about the size of your bank account, but could it be more about the quality of your life? When we say rich, the first thing that often comes to mind is monetary wealth. It's what we see splashed across glossy magazine covers, flaunted on social media, and immortalized in pop culture. But what does it really mean to have abundant monetary wealth? And is it all it's cracked up to be? On one hand, monetary wealth offers a level of financial freedom that is undeniably appealing. It's the ability to pay your bills without a second thought, to splurge on that dream vacation without batting an eye, to secure a future for your children and their children. It's the key that unlocks doors to luxury goods and experiences that are otherwise out of reach. Imagine walking into a high-end store and buying anything you want without checking the price tag first, or dining at the finest restaurants without worrying about the bill. That's the kind of freedom we're talking about. Beyond material possessions and experiences, monetary wealth also provides influence. It can be used to shape policies, fund causes you believe in, and make a real difference in the world. It's a powerful tool that, when used wisely, can lead to positive change. However, like all things in life, monetary wealth comes with its own set of drawbacks. For one, it can bring about a great deal of stress. The pressure to maintain and grow wealth, to make the right investments, to avoid financial pitfalls, it can all be overwhelming. Privacy becomes a luxury too, as the wealthy often find themselves under public scrutiny. Then there's the issue of superficial relationships. With wealth comes the risk of attracting people who are more interested in your bank account than you. It can be challenging to discern genuine connections from those simply looking to benefit from your prosperity. Monetary wealth can certainly provide a comfortable life, but it also has its own set of challenges. It's a double-edged sword that provides as much as it demands. So while it's natural to aspire for monetary wealth, it's important to understand the full picture and to remember that wealth, in its truest form, is not just about the money in our bank accounts. But what about being rich in emotions or relationships? Let's delve into this idea. Emotional wealth. Now this is a different kind of richness, one that's not often talked about in the same breath as money or assets, yet, it is a type of wealth that can significantly impact our lives and our happiness. Emotional wealth is about the richness of our personal relationships, our emotional well-being, and our sense of fulfillment. It's about the depth and breadth of our connections with others, the love we share with family and friends, the camaraderie we feel with colleagues or teammates, the shared experiences and the bonds we form over time. These are all part of our emotional wealth, and then there's emotional well-being. This is about our ability to understand and manage our emotions, to handle stress, to be resilient, to experience joy, sadness, anger, fear and love in healthy ways. It's about being able to bounce back from adversity, to persevere in the face of challenges, to find hope in despair. 
This too is part of our emotional wealth. Finally, there's a sense of fulfillment. This is the feeling that your life has purpose and meaning, that you're contributing to something larger than yourself, that you're growing and learning and evolving. It's about the satisfaction you get from pursuing your passions, achieving your goals, making a difference in the world. This sense of fulfillment too is a key aspect of emotional wealth. So you see, emotional wealth encompasses these three aspects. The richness of our relationships, our emotional well-being, and our sense of fulfillment. And these aspects can contribute significantly to a person's overall happiness and satisfaction. They say money can't buy happiness, and while it's true that money can provide comfort and security, it's also true that our emotional wealth can bring us a sense of contentment, joy, and satisfaction that money alone can't provide. Emotional wealth, then, might be as important, if not more so, than monetary wealth. Have you ever considered the wealth of knowledge and wisdom? A fascinating question, isn't it? Today, we're diving into the realm of intellectual wealth. This kind of wealth isn't measured by the size of your bank account, but by the depth of your knowledge, the breadth of your skills, and the weight of your wisdom. Intellectual wealth is a treasure trove that you carry within you. It's the knowledge you've accumulated through years of education, reading, and experience. It's the skills you've honed, whether that's coding, painting, cooking, or public speaking. It's the wisdom you've garnered from life's many trials and triumphs. One of the beautiful things about intellectual wealth is its potential for growth. Unlike physical money, which can be exhausted, intellectual wealth keeps growing the more you feed it. Every book you read, every course you take, every conversation you engage in, every experience you undergo adds to your intellectual wealth. Moreover, intellectual wealth can lead to personal growth and career advancement. Knowledge and skills are the keys that unlock doors to opportunities. They empower you to make informed decisions, solve complex problems, and create innovative solutions. They enhance your ability to communicate effectively, work collaboratively, and lead confidently. They make you more competent, more valuable, and ultimately, more successful in your chosen field. But the value of intellectual wealth goes beyond personal and career growth. It also leads to a deeper understanding of the world. It broadens your perspective, deepens your empathy, and heightens your appreciation for the richness and diversity of human experience. It equips you to engage in meaningful discussions, contribute to societal progress, and influence positive change. So, intellectual wealth isn't just about being smart or skilled. It's about nurturing a lifelong love for learning, cultivating a curious and open mind, and striving for wisdom and understanding. It's about recognizing that the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom is, in itself, a rewarding and enriching journey. So, intellectual richness can also be a form of wealth that enriches our lives in unique ways. It's a wealth that money can't buy, and that no one can take away from you. It's a wealth that truly makes you rich, in the most profound sense of the word. So, what does it mean to be truly rich? We've embarked on an enlightening journey together, peeling back the layers of what it means to be wealthy in its truest sense. We've discovered that being rich isn't confined to the limits of a bank account, but is a multifaceted concept that reaches into every corner of our lives. We delved into the realm of monetary wealth first, recognizing its undeniable importance. Money can open doors, provide security, and offer opportunities for experiences that enrich our lives. But it's not the only facet of wealth, and it's certainly not the most important. Next, we explored the concept of emotional wealth, an aspect of our lives that can't be quantified with numbers, yet is invaluable. The ability to feel deeply, to love and be loved, to experience happiness, sadness, and everything in between, these are the treasures of emotional wealth. It's about cherishing relationships, cultivating empathy, and nurturing our mental and emotional well-being. We then turned our attention to intellectual wealth, the richness of knowledge, the wealth of understanding, the luxury of curiosity, and the privilege of education. This form of wealth empowers us to make informed decisions, fuels our creativity, and shapes our worldview. It's a treasure that can never be taken away. In this journey, we've discovered that wealth is about more than just material possessions. It's about personal fulfillment, about feeling content with who you are and what you have. It's about acknowledging and valuing your worth beyond dollar signs. As we draw our journey to a close, let's remember that each of these facets of wealth is interconnected. 
they feed into one another, shaping a rich tapestry of life that is unique to each of us. Being rich then is perhaps less about how much you have and more about how much you value what you have. Because at the end of the day, the true measure of wealth is not what you've got in your pocket, but what you carry in your heart and mind.